I followed my dreams and opened an antique store to have adventures and spend time as a family. Sometimes you have to climb a mountain and open some new doors to find the treasures inside. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. This week we are back in action working on the race car. So my very talented and uh, super fantastic father-in-law Dave is lying on the ground <laughs> working on the tough stuff. He's doing more of the structural. I am not a good welder by any means, so he's working on the hard stuff. How's I'm it going not, down there? I'm not a good welder at the best of times either. Oh, I don't know about that. It's not like he did it his whole life. We're getting Just let me know when you're going to weld and I'll look away. Yep, watch out for the big bright lights. Yep. So between bad weather and a busy schedule, we haven't had much chance to work on this old race car, but today is the day. The goal is to get both the left and right motor mounts installed and in place so we can get the motor lined up and get the front suspension mounted back on so we can actually lower the car down and move it around. So that's the goal today. We're gonna keep welding, keep plugging away at it, and hopefully we'll get that accomplished by the end of the day. So what he's working on down there is getting the fish plates put in on our 45 cut that we made just so it uh, adds an extra level of security when we're driving this thing around. And what was the rationale, Dave? You, you can't weld all the way around on a fish plate, can you? No, you have to leave the ends open. And that allows for flex? For stress, yeah. For stress, okay. See, and if I was welding, I wouldn't know that. That's why you gotta ask someone who knows. Well, I don't know why. But the welder's not kicking off on me anymore. Yeah, it's not blowing the breaker. No, I haven't blown it yet. I don't know what the what the difference is. I maybe really don't. Maybe the furnace isn't kicking in or something because it's warm out now. Who knows? But that's good. Yeah, that's a good thing. Yeah, I was gonna say you're laying a bead there for a while. Saves a lot of saves a lot of going up and down the stairs. That so how's she looking, Dave? It's getting better. So that's the fish plate right in front of us there. It's kind of a little oval piece of metal. And the, this part here, that's the reason you cut it at a 45. You gotta weld those, but you leave this part open. The very ends. For flex and stress. That's right. Otherwise your frame would just crack in that place. And we're fish plating on the inside, obviously, so that the outside looks a little bit tidier. And grinding a little bit of the weld, there we are there. Oh, so once this is all blasted um, and painted, you won't be able to see too much, but that uh, weld is coming in nice and smooth. It's looking good. It's coming. Okay, you definitely don't want to be going down the road and have your frame snap in half. No, that's for damn sure. No, we don't want that to happen. In fact, I'm pretty sure that's what happened to the last guy that drove this car. The front suspension had sheared off the frame, causing the front suspension itself to break loose, pivot, and wreck the front end. So, we have just about everything fixed and repaired. We're gonna get it welded up, and hopefully not have any repeat issues with this car. So the other issue that we were having was that uh, this fan blade is way too tall now that this is going in a race car. So what we're going to do, um, and plus we have to clear the coolant line, and right now it would actually be cutting into the coolant line with the angle we have. So I've got to take the fan blade off, get the pulley back on, which means I have to uh, ground out these rivets and pull this fan off. We're going to put the pulley back on and then just use an electric fan, an electric fan in the uh, front of the car right up front here, right mounted behind the radiator. So I'm gonna grind these rivets off while Dave's been busy welding. I gotta do a little bit of work here, otherwise I gotta, won't be pulling my weight. So we're gonna get this done and uh, get that ready. And there it is, my pulley without the fan on it. Uh, the reason I wanted to reuse it is that it's the proper length, it's keyed for my car, and um, really it's probably the cheapest solution to figure out how to make the pulley stick on there. So. Took the fan blade off, I gotta pop those old rivets out and clean it up. Maybe give it a, a bit of a paint so it looks nicer and then reinstall it back on the engine. Just working on reinstalling the old steering box back inside. This is the one that wasn't working and I was told could not be rebuilt. Well, I took it apart, got it working again. And if we look, it's working. So, 
All I have to do now is get it bolted back into place and uh, make a new shaft for the steering wheel. So right now what we're doing is getting the motor mounts put into place. Going to tack them into spot for now. And this will support the back end of the engine on both sides. So one over there and one here. So we're just going to tack in and uh, we'll get ready to weld. I want this new wire, so I'm going to give this a tack. Watch your eyes. That's the way MIG is supposed to sound. Like electricity flowing through the hose. Yeah, it's just, just a hum. It's important during this whole process to check for square regularly and to measure and make sure you have everything in just the right spot before you weld. Because once you've got those welds in, it's a lot of work to undo it. A little too far, so I'll tack the top first. That off. Check for square this way. So before we can tack weld the front suspension onto the frame, we have to measure and make sure that everything is going to be exactly correct, otherwise you could be uh, trailing a little left or right um, and you don't want to be driving crooked down the racetrack, that's not safe. So we are going to be measuring from the back axle to the front on both sides to make sure that they are exact. I mean side to side because sir, our pin is what it is, right? Yeah. So we've taken a measurement basically right from the very back and to the exact same point on both uh, the rear axle and the front end and held it in place with these uh, heavy duty ratchet straps. Now I don't want to bump it and we're just going to tack weld it in and then remeasure before we do the other side. But everything's looking nice and square right now. And I doubt very much whether the guys did that originally because this car was, uh, yeah, it, it wasn't a super professional build. It was a somewhat professional build. So we're going to try and uh, straighten a few things out. Up the outside of the frame. This is your carrying member here. I will tack you, it underneath first. Do you want the jack? Huh? No, no, no. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tack it underneath and I'll just push it over. Uh oh, it looks like with all this talking we were doing that Dave forgot to put his welding gloves back on. I'm guessing after he does a couple tack welds, he's going to notice pretty quick. I was blind. Couldn't see what I was doing. You get it? Yeah, that's pretty close. I'm going to tack this other corner now before it falls out of the way. Now Dave has over 40 years of welding experience, mainly doing pressure vessels and large industrial units. A job like this is real easy for him. He knows exactly how to lay a good bead and how to make sure it's structurally sound. I'm very glad for the help. All right.
So the suspension is welded back onto the frame. It's a lot sturdier than it was before. Um, now we can actually move the vehicle around if we have to. We couldn't before because it would have broken the front spring. So it is uh, really getting farther along. The next thing I have to do uh, for the next video is gonna be uh, mounting the engine onto the motor mounts, which are now welded in. Uh, we have to figure out where the front mount is gonna go. Um, and then I can actually look and start thinking about getting that uh, engine in place. So making some good progress this week. So thanks again for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, make sure to keep tuning in because there's updates coming on this car now that it's summer. Uh, we should uh, start making some real progress right away here. So uh, check us out online at curiosityedmonton.ca. We're on Facebook and Instagram as well. But thanks again for watching and we'll see you guys soon. Bye for now.